Okay. I've already seen it. Just keep that. I've already looked at it. So, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of March 17th. Roll call, please. All five selectmen are present, as well as um, the um, town council. However, the town administrator will be here momentarily. He was in and out. It's okay. Announcements. Mr. Teitelbaum. Uh, just a reminder again, the election is on Tuesday, April 7th. Uh, precinct places are Precinct 1. Town Hall, Precinct 2 is Onset, Precinct 3. Hammond School. Hammond School, yep. Uh, precinct 3 is Minot Forest School, Precincts 4 and 5 are at the Deca School, and Precinct 6 is, is at Minot Forest School. Uh, the Onset Protective League is holding their annual Candidates Night on March 26th, Thursday at 7 p.m., uh, where you'll get to listen to at least one of us discuss things, as well as candidates for other offices. This is Whiteside. I'm not Irish. <laughs> that's, the, that's the announcement? Okay. Mr. Tropiano, I know you're only part Irish. All set. You you're all set? Unless you're Irish. Uh, nothing in the file today. Mr. Holmes? I am English. Does that count a little bit? No, no not at all. Oh. That's bad. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, we, uh, you know, it's that time of year again where the roads, uh, most of them have some tar on them. Mr. Mm -hmm. Sullivan's not here, right? So I can joke a little bit. I don't want to frustrate him. Um, but last year, if you recall, we had this conversation. Uh, it's not free. You paid for it at one point in time through your tax dollars. But there's plenty of sand out there on the roadways, especially around the catch basins and things. So if you want to sweep it up, and uh, last year we told you to put it in a bag and put it in your backyard and keep it for the next winter. So um, you can do us a favor by trying to keep the streets clear. And two, you can do yourself a favor next winter by saving yourself a bag of 40 pound uh, sand. I know I'll have Sean out sweeping on Sid Avenue next week <laughs> once all the uh, ice is gone. So I know that's gonna be an issue coming up over the next couple of weeks. And unless anybody's heard any different, uh, we can try to save that from going down the basins, right? Yes, we don't want them down the basements. Okay. Mm -hmm. So get out your brooms and enjoy some sand. Thank you. Just a few things today. This is a well in advance reminder. The uh, Wareham, Friends of the Wareham Free Library are going to have their rubber duck race at the Honet Pond Canal. This will be all the way out <coughs> June 14th. So you can go get your ducks and practice, I guess. It will be $5 for duck. I'll get a whole flock. Oh, nice word. Um, and we, for the benefit of the Wareham Free Library, again at Tohono Village at Makepeace. Um, a couple of interesting things have happened over the last couple of days. And I'll do this as quickly as I can. Um, County Road has been basically a disaster. Uh, County Road is a problem because it actually is owned by three towns. There are some points in County Road where in the middle of the road, all three towns come together at a point. So it's pretty hard to fix and figure out who owns what and where. Um, there was an, uh, an actual attempt at one time for County Road to be adopted back by uh, the state of Massachusetts so MassDOT could work with it so we could work with uh, different programs. We had a meeting today, I'm on the, what they call the MOP, which does all the transportation improvement programs for Southeast Mass. Um, and we were voting and stuff. I brought the issue up today about this and uh, we're basically going to go ahead and reapply to the state, the three towns, uh, to see if we can get County Road accepted as a state accepted road, which we can then turn around and get the repair work done on a tip. The only problem is we, the road should have been done last year, never mind this year. So we're going to be working on it. We also had a fellow, uh, gentleman from the Federal Highway uh, there, and they also have programs. So we are going to try and see what we can do. It's a serious issue. We know it is. Uh, some of our residents have been complaining recently, uh, but myself, John Henry uh, from Marion, and, a couple, and actually the full board of Rochester Selectmen have all basically issued uh, requests, and so this is most likely gonna happen. Uh, there's also, there was an issue brought up on, uh, down on Swiss Beach Road and uh, Marion Road where the speed limit's still up around 50, and there is a crosswalk that goes over just before the Wareham supermarket, and there's been an issue about safety, so the town is going to have to, after speaking with them today, make a formal request to reduce the speed limit down to 35 there, 
and also hopefully put some illuminated signs for the crosswalk itself. So we will be as active as we can in that. And uh, that's all I have for now. The other stuff we'll do at the end of the meeting. All right, citizens participation. Anyone here to speak to us this evening? Except for Dave. Dave never speaks. He's got that funny hat right. on though. Seeing none, we'll move on. <clears throat> Appointments, uh, we have none this yes. evening, so we're going to move on from that. Licenses, we got that's a hearing, so let's bump up to, let's see, the one-day licenses, because we got a hearing at 715. We can do, uh, <clears throat> we can do the common Vic if you want. Go ahead. You want to do that? Go ahead. On Rose uh, Cranberry just, Hospitality. Why don't we just do the change of manager? You can do you can do the change of manager. Do the cranberry. We can do that. Yeah. Two rows, but we'll do them both. Yeah. 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 So 99. We have a little issue with the 99 application, okay. and that is that um, it says 99 restaurants of Boston LLC, and on our thing it says 99 restaurants and pub, and that's the way it was posted on the agenda. I am not sure whether that's going to cause us a problem or not. We can call that a Scribner's error. Um, uh, Scribner. Sure. Scribner. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. As long as the the internal paperwork, you know, the application it's and correct. then the name that's actually on the license are the same. Yeah, that's okay, okay, it's all correct. All right, so this is a change of manager from Todd Cadero to Zoltan Phillips uh, for the 99 restaurant. And all the paperwork is here, his license. I don't know if the Corey's back yet. Um, I didn't see it in here, but that it, it obviously would be subject to all that. And, uh, we can make the motion with the uh, stipulation that it's not in effect until the quarry is presented. All right, we will. Excuse I'll me. make a motion that we approve the change of manager from Todd Cardero to Zoltan Phillips um, for 99 restaurants of Boston LLC, subject to. Uh, the paperwork coming back as far as the quarry goes and the approval, obviously, of the ABCC. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 5 0 0. Okay. I have that one, Judy. You take that one. What's that? Yeah. What, the Kathleen Lucy? Yeah. All right, so uh, these are one-day licenses. Um, this one is for uh, Kathleen M. Lucy. Now, she has hired uh, New England uh, New England um, bartending, bartending to do the event. So yeah, their, have, their information is all here. Yeah, we have all the and paperwork. Yeah, insurance. it's all here. Everything's good. Yep. All right, so this is for... Um, Box Mill Hall on Tyonet Road. It's an all alcoholic beverage license for one day for March the 17th, 2015. But no, I'm sorry. April it's 4th. April the 4th, 2015, between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. I move we approve this. Second. For a wedding. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mr. Holmes. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero, me, five zero zero. Next one up is New England Bartending School, uh, LLC, William Fuller. This is for uh, Box Mill, Tyone Road Village again. It's for beer and wine for July the 11th, 2015 and September the 19th, 2015, between the hours of 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. I move we approve this. All paperwork is present. All paperwork second. is present. Second. And both of them are weddings. Just okay. Okay. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Well, Five zero zero. Married. All right. All right, here, can you put that back in with that one? Together. There you go. All right, is Guy here tonight? Guys, so we're not gonna we're gonna put off the sewer abatements. No, he's mm -hmm. supposedly in your file. There should be enough information for us to be able to make this decision. Each one of them on our own. Right, let's well, let's let's start them. We get a few minutes, so let's start them. Okay, uh, we got sewer abatements. The first one is for Map 11, Lot 19, 58 Ellis Avenue, 
uh, Westgate, Neil E, and Judith A. I am recommending the above, this is what he says, I recommend the, note, the above noted account be abated in the amount of $99.33 for the second half FY 2015. This residence was demolished in December of 2014. This account will then be placed on hold until such time as a new residence is built. Motion by Mr. Chopiano, second by Mr. Holmes. Just a, not a question, but just a statement. If any of these abatements, any of the members have any question or are not completely at ease, we can put it off for a later date, just so you know. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 500. Thank you. Okay, next up is account 792521, map 39, lot T36A, uh, 47 Oak Street. It says, I'm recommending the above noted account be abated in the amount of $248.33 for the second half FY 215. A garage which was held, which held a bathroom was demolished on August 19, 2014. This account will then have a reduction of one EDU. Move it. Move to approve. Go ahead, Mr. Actually, who's the second first? Second. Thank you. Motion by... Mrs. Whiteside, second by Mr. Teitelbaum. Go ahead, Mr. Holmes. Yeah, it, I, I can't see this too good, guys. I know where the property is. They yeah, did, I'm trying did, to look up the top here. It says O's. Is it is that six hundred and forty-nine dollars and sixty cents? Yeah. So if he owes forty-nine, how are we abating two forty-eight? Is to is forty nine dollars the balance? Yeah, no. And how does a bathroom use that much as compared to a house? Unless they were charging an EDU. So you know I mean? it was look an on EDU. The, if you look on your papers where, where Patrick just read, just flip over on the back of that page. For the rest of us. Patrick might have it on the second page. Forty seven Oak Street would be on the water side. You know, everything on the water side there I believe has grinder pumps which you have to pump up through. So if there's a garage, the garage is up at the street level. There might be two systems On the back there. of that page. Flip that page over and look on the back. PD, you got yours like mine written on the back? Right. Do you I've got it here. You see that at the top? It says 8914. It says O's. That, see, I'm trying to see if that's 649. All right, I got to stop you, though. No, it's a dollar sign. It looks like dollar sign 4900. 715 on. hearing, so I got to put it off. We can come back to this right. in a minute, if you don't okay. mind. Yeah, maybe somebody can figure All right, that this out. is a notice of a public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Selectmen has received an application for a transfer of an existing year-round common vicula all-alcoholic beverage license from Rosebrook Place Hospitality LLC, DBA Rosebrook Place Hospitality Inn, and Conference Center, James F. Kane, Manager, 2472 Cranberry Highway, Wareham, to Cranberry Hospitality, LLC, Jeffrey Penault, Manager, 50 Rosebrook Way, Wareham, Mass., under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws for the year 2015, as affected by Chapter 2, by, ch affected by Chapter 424 of the Acts of 2006. The event center has two large function rooms totaling 3,500 square feet with a seating capacity of 300 persons. The facility has a pre-function area, full service kitchen, meeting room, bar area, men's and women's room. Alcohol will be kept and stored in a locked closet in the Rosebrook Event Center. It is ordered that a public hearing be held on said application with the selectmen meeting at approximately 7.15 p.m. in the multi-service center, room 320, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, on the 17th day of March, 2015. And it's signed uh, by the Board of Selectmen, Alan H. Uh, Slaver, <coughs> Chairman Patrick G. Tropiano, Clerk, Stephen H. Holmes, Peter W. Teitelbaum, and Judith Whitesize. I move we open the public hearing. Second. Second. <coughs> Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 5 zero, zero. Why don't you gentlemen come up, please? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. If you both could introduce yourselves so the public knows. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is James Kane. I'm currently the manager listed under Rosebrook Hospitality. Westbrook Place of Hospitality, LLC. And um, it's no secret to you that for some time we have been constructing a Rosebrook Place 
and this is the first of two visits that I'll be making to the board in the next month. This will seek the board's approval to transfer the license from Rosebrook Place Hospitality, which frankly was just a holding unit for this license that was awarded by the uh, legislature to the town and for that parcel. And hopefully this evening with your approval, it will move over to what we affectionately call the Marriott, and Jeff will get into the more specifics, to provide uh, for the all pouring license for the conference center. And later in April, I'll be here before you for the uh, Mill Pond Station transfer. But um, that's the story from where it starts this evening and now moves over to um, Mr. Pignon. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, the rest of the board. My name is Jeff Pino. Uh, I'm the uh, CFO of the France Hospitality Company. And uh, uh, again here uh, to hopefully uh, seek the approval of a liquor license transfer from um, Make Peace folks to, uh, to us over at the uh, Marriott Rosebrook, Rosebrook Event Center, uh, which we uh, hope to open in the very short term, uh, probably early April when the hotel opens, uh, the conference center. And so we're excited. We've been uh, in the process, the uh, building process now for quite some time and uh, anxious to uh, bring a hotel and conference center to, to uh, Wareham. Okay. Questions from the board, Mr. Teitelbaum. When do you plan to open? Uh, right now, the, uh, the scheduled open date is April 7th. Okay. Uh, we're hoping to, uh, to open before that. Uh, so the uh, opening date is, uh, is uh, imminent. Thank you. This is Whiteside. Do you have um, specials for the All-Star Game being held here this year for the where, um, Cape Cod Baseball League? Uh, yeah, we're actually uh, you know working with those folks uh, right now, so uh, certainly uh, we uh, definitely will uh, consider that for sure. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Hey Jim, how are you? Good, how are you? I've seen you in a while. Yes, You're looking it's been good. A while. You ready to hit the hit the streets tonight? Uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, when the meeting gets <laughs> over. Lightly. Jeff, it's good to see you. And like, how are you making yeah. out? Yeah, good. I remember good. your first night here. So That's this right. is uh, a yeah. second night or third night now. That's right, sure. Is. You know that uh, I drove by today, so I know that you put a good roof on it. <laughs> uh, you, didn't have, you didn't have any issues. It was certainly tested over the last couple of months, yeah, wasn't it? So uh, listen, it's uh, everybody's talking about it. It's a great, great, great uh, venture that both of you have done. And uh, I want to thank both of you on behalf of the citizens. Uh, we really appreciate you investing in Wareham, and uh, it's all going to be very successful. Thank Great, you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. <coughs> Looking forward to it. When do you actually plan for the soft opening before the actual? Usually it's a little advanced when you test everything out. Yeah, I mean, probably on or about that, that date. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make a comment, because I actually ran into a resident in the town a couple of days ago. Uh, and there's a major misconception. Uh, we provided a TIF uh, for the hotel to make it uh, feasible for them to come and make the actual opening, et cetera, you know, financially reasonable as a kickstart to it. The town generates uh, an extremely do large dollar amount of funds versus what the actual little discount in the tax rate was as far as the land. And the gentleman that I spoke to thought that we were giving it to AD Makepeace and was all upset that the, they have so much money, what do they need it for? So I just want to make the public uh, understand that the TIF was given to the hotel to assist the hotel in opening and also allowing the hotel to go to the state for tax incentives as well. And without that, this would not have happened. Any other questions from the board? No. I'll ask a motion to close. Actually, no. no actually, I'm sorry. A public hearing. A public first. Sorry. Anyone? Oh, I'm rushing. Anyone want to speak in favor of the applicant? I'm in favor. Okay. Anyone opposed? The record shows Mr. Barrows is in favor. Anybody want to speak against the applicant? Seeing none, I move we close the public hearing. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mr. Tuttlewell. Any questions from the board? I'll take a motion on the first I move we license. approve the all, um, the all kind of alcoholic beverage transfer uh, from, let me read it again. I got it. I got it. From Rosebrook Place Hospitality LLC, DBA Rosebrook Place Hospitality Inc. in and Conference Center to Cranberry Hospitality LLC, um, DBA, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, the DBA is 
Town Place Suites. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And that's what it says here, so that's good news. Second. It matches. Second. Uh, oh. Cranberry Hospitality, LLC, DBA, Town Place Suites, Wareham, 50 Rosebrook Way, Manager Jeffrey P. Penalt. Um, under the cha under Chapter 138 of the Master's General Laws as amended. Second. That's a combination of this. Common Vic and all alcohol. Well, we got a common Vic here. Yeah, it's separate. It's on the phone, too. Yeah. yeah, we'll get that. We'll get to that. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 5 0 0. All right, we also have a, a common Vic for these folks as well. So I move we approve. A common vic for Cranberry Hospitality LLC, Town a DBA Town Place Suites Wareham, 50 Rose Brook Way, uh, for a common vic license. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropio, second by Mr. Holmes. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Five zero zero. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, we can go back to sewer right. abatements. You. Appreciate it. And Thank you very uh, much. Go ahead, Steve. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, just back to my question. On the flip side of page one there, on yep. that one, I can't see, Patrick, if that says the, on your copy. Can you see if that, it doesn't even make sense. It's, if the, it looks like it's $49. It says $49 and, and abate in 248. Well, he that probably, doesn't, he that probably doesn't. had a bill. It, it totaled two together. He probably had that much for a bill. Yeah. Pending, and they, he, they basically abate on the 248. And he had to pay the balance. Oh, he still has a balance. And he, he had a balance. Probably he still has a balance. Is that a six or a dollar no, sign? No, that's, that's a dollar sign to me. Right. Yeah, it looks okay. like a dollar sign, Steve. I just wanted to verify that before. Yeah. No problem. Okay. So I move we approve the uh, for account 792521, map 39, lot T36A, in the uh, an abatement in the amount of $248.33. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropio, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions from the board? In the oh, one more thing. And the garage had its own EDU? I don't know if the garage had its own yeah, EDU. Yeah, it did. But it, see, it says reduction of yes, one yeah, EDU. It had, it it had its just, own, yes. Just, just so you know, th this is the property on Oak Street uh, where recently there's been some demolition activity at the top of the street. Yep. They're in the process of excavating further down the hill for a permanent house. So on Oak Street, what they did was they put the cottages down low near the water back in the 30s. Yeah. And then they put right, the garages up the high. What has happened in the interim is as the properties become more valuable, uh, people are redoing the garages okay. and turning them into bigger and better cottages. In this instance, what they did was uh, took the lot where the garage was. I don't believe there was a house down below. They demolished the garage that had been converted into a cottage some time ago, and that's why the bathroom was in there. Yeah. Now they're building a, a better house, but the house, in the interim, there's nothing being served there by the sewer. Can't have an, an in law house as well. Right? Yes. Okay, next. Thanks. Account uh, number 736. No, we didn't. Did you just vote on it? I thought he had a question. Oh, no, I had a question. We voted. So he had a question. You asked after the question, though. We uh, voted first because I wrote it down when we voted. No, we just had a motion. No, we voted on it 500. I'm telling you. And was the then first what one. happened, Steve says no, just a minute, and he wanted to ask another question, but it's already was voted on. Fine. Okay, we voted twice. Next. That, that only means they got one abatement. Count number 737961, map 61, lot 10322, 425 Main Street, um, where as I recommend that the above noted account be abated in the amount of $596 for FY 2015. This parcel was <laughs> subdivided when condominiums were built on the property. In the past, this account was placed on hold and should have been subsequently made inactive. Due to an error, this account was somehow reactivated and this customer was billed through two accounts. Once the abatement is processed, this account will be made inactive and will no longer be used. I move we approve. Second. This. Motion by Mr. Tropio, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 5 0 0. Next up, account number 738587, map 50A, lot 167D, 10 Columbia Street. I am recommending that the above noted account be abated in the amount of $248.33 for the second half FY 2015. The water was shut off to this resident on July 22nd, 2013. This account will then be placed on hold until such time as the water is turned back on. I move we approve. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mr. Teitelbaum. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 5 0 0. Okay. 
All right, next up, account 738222, map 3A-1, lot 4, 30 Maple Street. I'm recommending that the above noted account be abated in the amount of $149 for the second half FY 2015. It was confirmed by the Onset Water Department that the water had been turned off to the residents on October 18, 2013. This account will then be placed on hold until the water is turned back on. Move it. Right, Motion please. by Mrs. Whiteside, second. second by Mr. Teitelbaum. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Next up is account number 739580, map 50B-4, lot 21, 5T Street. I am recommending that the above noted account be abated in the amount of $596 for the FY 2015. It was, a current, was confirmed by the Wareham Water Department that the curb stop is in place to the back cottage. This account will be reduced by one EDU going forward. I'll move it, but I have a question. Which motion, you can motion by Mrs. Whiteside. Yeah. Have a second. 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 Second by Mr. Holmes. Can question, I, go ahead, Mrs. Whiteside. May I ask what the um, effect of the curb stop Curb is? stop is a shutoff. That's where the shutoff is. Thank That's you. Sort of <laughs> okay. No other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Perfect. Thank okay. you all. Next up. Do you Next want to up, uh, go vote on the special town meeting warrant. Right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Why don't we go out of order and Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Do you taking somebody else out of order? I was gonna take uh, basically the uh, Buzz Bay Coalition so they can come in here and go out. Following that, I would like to take uh, before Patrick continues, I'd like to take eight F out of order as well. AF. On an emergency situation. Okay. No problem. But we also were not. It could affect 8A. That's why I'm. That's why I need to speak before Patrick does. Yeah, because on, on 8A we still have to go through if we have any other articles. Because I think we still have some, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, but prior to him doing A and B there, I need to speak before he does that. So you want to bring up the Buzzard Bay Coalition? Yeah. Let's uh, okay. get, see if we can get get the gentleman in and out. Buzzard Bay Coalition. Meet with the Buzz Bay Coalition on Conservation Restriction. Good evening. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Alan, to the Absolutely. board. Absolutely. My name is Alan Decker. I'm, with the, I'm the Land Protection Director with the Buzzards Bay Coalition based in New Bedford. It's been a little while since I've been in front of you, but i um, pleased to be here this evening and appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak with you about the proposed conservation restriction to be placed on the property known as Wee Wee Antic Ridge, which is property on Blackmore Pond Road fronting on Horseshoe Mill. I provided a set of documents via email to the town administrator, and I want to make sure that you've got those documents this evening. Because if you don't, I have paper copies with me that I'm happy to hand up right now. These. These. Is that as well as a map of the property so that? You're familiar with it? You I may already the, be familiar? We're already familiar with it. I, at least I am, but the map is not here. Okay. Uh, Tell you what, let me just do this very quickly. I'm not even interested in this little thing. I know. I want to. That's a good thing. This is a 22 and a quarter acre property that uh, the town acquired in July of 2012 using in part funding from CPA. Town meeting did approve the acquisition uh, and with the use of CPA funding, the statute calls for the placement of a conservation restriction over the property to a, a willing and able conservation organization. Buzzards Bay Coalition is such an organization, and we have brought this forward through the Conservation Commission. March 4th, the <coughs> commission actually voted to grant the conservation restriction as part of the process. 
I am here seeking your approval of this as well. In addition to the document you have in front of you for the conservation restriction, there is also a pledging of the town's acquisition of this property to a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service federal grant that was used here in the town of, of Wareham to acquire other properties. Uh, the property that you may know of as the Westgate property, uh, that is town owned, and then we the coalition used a portion of this federal money to acquire the Horseshoe Mill property where the, the dam is actually located. What we're doing this evening in addition to the conservation restriction is pledging the town's acquisition of the Wee Wee Antic Ridge property to the federal grant as match value. So I'm happy to answer questions. I don't want to any, belabor any, any points or any time and not take up unnecessary time. But uh, as I said, I'm happy to, to chat with you or, or talk in further detail on the conservation restriction. Mr. Teitelbaum. Yeah, I, I, we saw this earlier this week. Uh, the only terms in here that, that really matter are the rights and responsibilities of the parties, of course, the, the prohibited uses and then the allowed uses. Uh, and in, in some instances, uh, those allowed uses require the agreement of both parties to accomplish. The only things that I really question in here are number nine under the uh, permitted uses regarding stone walls. It says the maintenance and repair of existing stone walls. Uh, I'm just curious to know whether our town administrator has any idea what kind of walls are out there, uh, what kind of obligation we'd be incurring here uh, under that provision. No, I don't. Do you? Yeah, could you, if you could describe them to us. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not directly familiar with stone walls on the property and there's there's th this isn't an obligation to maintain them this is the ability to do so okay i just want to make you, sure should you yeah. choose to okay uh, i just want to make is, sure it doesn't create that obligation because if the place is festooned with stone walls i don't i don't think we you know no, <laughs> we don't want our people out there 10 days like every year no that's correct and well it, you this can't is, see through the trees yeah this is not an obligation this is allowing the town the flexibility to do so and we we candidly include this in many of our conservation restrictions simply because there are properties that have tumbled down or ruins of, of stone walls that are at least existing enough to provide the semblance right. of, of, a, of a stone wall. But to your point, it's not an obligation. Okay. And then the next one is the, the uh, provision that immediately follows that one, canoe kayak launch site. Yes. Uh, it just says, with prior written approval from the grantee, the construction maintenance, marking, and use of a launch site. I, I guess from my perspective, I'm willing to concede that you don't need more than one launch site. Uh, in other words, we don't have to open up the entire waterfront where you have 10 different spots to launch kayaks and canoes from. Uh, I am a little concerned uh, with the prior written approval from the grantee that that might hamstring us a little bit in actually accomplishing this. Well, we view ourselves, obviously we're the grantee, we view ourselves as a partner with the town in the management of this property, if you will. What we're interested in encouraging is the amount of public access that the town is, is comfortable in having a, on the property. Again, this is not an obligation on the town's right. part, but a, but a reserved right. No. So, <coughs> I understand, but to, but to the extent that it, it does give you, in, in essence, a, a veto power over that. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying we likely would want to do this. And we would want you to do it as well. What we would, what we would like to do is, is work with Mr. Pichette and the Conservation Commission in the best sighting given the access. Right, and I'm, I, that's what I was going to get to, is I'd be more comfortable if the language in here made reference that the party shall agree upon the site of a launch site, one launch site, uh, rather than uh, just the language here, as, as, as it's currently stated, with prior written approval from the grantee, it, it, it in essence does allow that as a veto power. Again, I'm not saying that you would ever exercise this, mm -hmm. uh, but 100 years from now, somebody might. So that's my concern is when we're no, we, you and I are no longer around to monitor this thing. Uh, so I, I would really prefer that language be done away with, and then the party shall agree 
upon the location of a launch site. Something along those lines would be. <coughs> I don't know if council is looking at this or. Perhaps you could suggest some language for us here. Such consent shall not be unreasonably withheld yeah. because the standard. We're happy to do that. Yeah, okay, that's okay. fine. We can leave it alone and then just. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Title? No. This is White Side. Um, no, I, the only comment I have is that it's great that you were able to use this contribution towards other. In other words, it was piggyback. The we're very appreciative of that as well. Um, we were very happy to help the town with the acquisition of the Westgate property, and this just enables us to close out the match requirement for that federal grant. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Holmes. This is the trophy alone. All right, so, um, you know, I guess um, my problem with any of these Mike. candidates is this is very restrictive as to what the town's rights are. And basically, uh, we give you this property and you have total control over it. As a matter of fact, you have a better deal over it because you don't own it, but you have control over it, which is really even better. And the town has no control after that. You have all the control the way this document is written. And I'm not too crazy about giving total control to any property that we have purchased uh, through uh, our funds uh, to anybody. Uh, I just, I don't see any reason to do that. Uh, I think the town needs to have a seat at the table, as far as I'm concerned, <coughs> when it comes to these things. And, and as I, this stands... Can I explain something, Patrick, if you'd like? This article was passed at town meeting with a restriction for a conservation restriction, which yep. the Buzzers Bay Coalition was going to be the partner. What's happening here, this, next, this is the conservation restriction, which I went through and looked through and I checked with other ones, and it's a standard form as to everything. What the deal is, is what the difference was in this, which concerned me, was they were going to be pledging the land in order to piggyback on a federal grant because the fishery and wildlife is here. Yeah. That is completely separate from town meeting. The town meeting article, actually, that's exactly what it's supposed to be there because that's what was approved. What they're asking for is to allow, for us to allow them to basically hook up with fisheries and wildlife and pledge this land in order to get a larger package for themselves. Okay, I know what these things are. Okay. I understand, but I'm I've just been letting doing you know this what, a long time. I just want right. to know what town I meeting you to passed. Know. I know exactly what these things are. I've been doing this a long time. And I don't like the fact that we give up all the town rights to somebody else. I just don't like it. I like the town to have some say in what's going on, in which they don't. You can say, well, we're going to work with you, we're going to work with whatever. But if you read this document, there is no reason in the world you have to do anything with us. You could say whatever you want to say. Okay, you can have total control of the property. You could shut the property down tomorrow and say nobody can use it. <coughs> nobody can go on it, nobody can do anything, if you so choose. And that's my problem with all of these types of documents. And I know these are, a lot of these things have boilerplate in them, you know, and all that, and, and that's fine. Boilerplate, you know, that's legal ease as far as I'm concerned. All right, but, and just because we have agreed to a conservation uh, caretaker, doesn't mean we have to agree to all the language. Doesn't mean that we can't look at the language and tweak it a little bit to give the town a little more say. A little, like, like Peter was trying to say. Peter was trying to, uh, to get us a little more say. I think that's what he was trying to do. And I think that's reasonable. And uh, frankly, I think we ought to wait and uh, deal with this a little bit. I only got it a few days ago and had to read through all this. And I got a, a brief description from town council over there on some of the, the points that he asked us to look at. So I think we ought to hold it for now and, uh, and look at it a little closer and maybe have some, some more time with council on exactly what we want to see in this document. May I just okay. make sure that you understand that town, the town has been a participant in this, in this process with the Conservation Commission, which yep. is part of the town, mm -hmm. clearly. Right. And we have partnered with Mr. Pichette and his commission members in drafting this, this conservation restriction. So the town has been involved. Well, 
you know, <coughs> just 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 to, to keep on that, if you want to stick with that, um, the Conservation Commission agreed to this, but basically this is a boilerplate agreement. So they agreed to a boilerplate agreement. They didn't agree, uh, you know, to look at every line and say, well, you know what, maybe the town could have a little more rights here, a little more here to say about where the thing's going to be and what these kinds of things and what uses it gets and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, uh, conservation is, is a wonderful thing. It's a good thing to have. Everybody loves to have land put aside so that it stays and maintains. But a piece of land that just sits there with nobody being able to have any access to it is ridiculous, well, in my opinion. Okay, uh, and I appreciate that opinion. That is direct, directly contrary to what this document allows. Mm -hmm. This document, the property is publicly owned. We can't prevent the public from coming on the property, nor, do, nor would we wish to. Public access is Do you is want me to read the, the sections in here that allow you to do that? Would you like me to read that to you? Would you like me to read it to you, the, the disclosures that does allow you to say just about anything you want? Because they're in here. Have you read it? Yes, sir, I have read it. Well, I I, I'm, I'm not sure, sure but... Uh, you know, in my est I'm just saying, in my estimation, and I'll let my members make the decision, as far as I'm concerned, it needs to have work. It needs more work. That's the title, Bob. I, I get what Patrick is saying in, in some respects. I, I think the Buzzers Bay Coalition would be a very foolish partner were it to, in a draconian fashion, exercise every single potential right it has here and bar anybody from the town or anybody else using the property. I, I don't foresee that happening. And I do understand you've been working with the Conservation Commission, uh, but these documents are forever. And that is a legitimate concern. What we agree to tonight or what we agree to going forward, eventually when we put our John Hancocks on this thing, it's binding on the parties and it's real hard to change anything going forward. No. Uh, understood. And you know, my my concern with these with these documents is you you end up working with the conservation commission. That makes sense. That's where you should start. But I think there needs to be a better workflow process from the conservation commission to us. We shouldn't be uh, essentially handed an applicant with a complete piece of paper with no commentary, no access to the conservation commission to talk about what the contents of the document are. In my in my estimation. Very good point. <laughs> that, well, if they're the representatives, then we need to hear from them. All right. They, vote, they voted to approve it. Mrs. Whiteside? Um, remind me what you said earlier. This was approved by a town meeting, sir. Yes. Okay, so this, in fact, was approved by a town meeting. This is a standard document. If you look at the map, um, the page two maps, what we are, in fact, creating here is contiguous land mass for public use. That's the point for that map. And that is the entire point for the map. Um, I'm not sure whether Horseshoe is a um, land trust. large, what's the, the ones that are? A great pond? A great pond. No, ma'am. Don't it's think not. it isn't. No, it's not. So, um, but there are many, many um, uh, passive recreation uses that can go on on any one of these parcels, and in fact, they are contiguous. So it's not just protecting the land. Um, furthermore, the Buzz Bay Coalition has actually won awards for its stewardship of the lands and the waters of Buzzards Bay. Um, it was a grassroots effort started, I don't know, 25 years ago maybe, 30 years ago, something like that. Um, at one point I served on the board, so I will disclose that. Um, and I think that this is a really good opportunity, especially because we are able to piggyback that, that land into the federal grant. So I support it 100%. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bowen, I believe that you were working with uh, Alan on this back and forth. Are there any issues that you came up with? She was one that was vetting the contract back and forth. Well, just a, a few comments. Uh, Sorry, number one, on uh, this is a fairly standard conservation restriction. And when I wrote to the board, what I advised was take a careful look um, 
at certain sections, specifically between pages three and six, because that's where your permitted and, and unallowed uses are. And to review those uses uh, in the context of your vision for the use of the particular property. Uh, now, if the allowed and prohibited uses are consistent with that vision, then this is a perfectly satisfactory and legal document to enter into. Now, I, I can well appreciate some of the, the comments that were being made by uh, Selectman Tropiano uh, and Selectman Teitelbaum concerning the future. Uh, sitting here today, we're all persons of goodwill. Uh, we are, I believe, all reasonable people. Uh, and it's always difficult to predict how people might conduct themselves in 5, 10, 50, or 100 years, 200 years. A document like this lasts forever, as you have accurately pointed out. One thing that I'd suggest, and perhaps, um, and I'm hitting Alan with this right now, anywhere in the document where it references our desire to, to undertake a particular use, you know, for example, uh, Select and Teitelbaum uh, had spoken in terms of kayaking and so forth. There are other such provisions in here. What I'd suggest maybe to, to give ourselves a better chance that those who will follow us are reasonable, that wherever a permission uh, may be sought from the BBC uh, and it may be granted by the BBC, that we say such permission shall not be unreasonably withheld. I think if we include that language everywhere where we are obliged to seek their permission to undertake a particular activity, I think that locks in the concept that our successors will have to proceed reasonably. I'm sure that's the case right now. Absolutely. We're happy to do that. And then with respect to other activities in here, you know, for example, logging and mining. Well, we're not going to be out logging and mining. Um, right, exactly. You know, so I, I, so I don't think it's that sort of thing that that troubles us if, if I'm taking the no. pulse of the board. It's no, these no, other no. things, and it's the reasonability. So I think if we put in such uh, permission shall not be unreasonably denied or, or words to that effect, I really think that we can accomplish what you're striving for. If you think that would be acceptable on your end, of course, it's your call too. Mr. Tropio, could I just ask you one question? All right, so uh, unre you see, one of the things that always bothers me is this, these terms, these legal kinds of yeah. things. For instance, day-to-day. -day. There is really no description of day-to-day, -day, and if you tried to argue it, you couldn't argue it if you wanted to. How does this stack up in relationship to that? I mean, does, if you say reasonably withheld, well, one man's reason is not as different than, an, than another man's reason. I mean, Absolutely. we've gone through that in recent times with other members or other people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, their reason and our reason were not the same. I, I understand. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair. Yes. The, you know, the difficulty in the purely American legal system is that we're and I'm, I know I'm getting all philosophical, and I promise to keep it short, especially for you, Steve, because you hate when I do this. Uh, you know, in the American system, we are... Well, I'll, I'll make it quick. No, I want to hear what he has to say. All right. But, uh, look, the American system is one where we write everything down. We have constitutions, uh, we have ordinances, bylaws, everything's written down. Compare it with that of our forebears, the English system, where everything is done by common law, by case law, by precedent. I think it would be impossible for us to write in a definition, you know, what reasonable means. Reasonable is always going to be reasonable in the context of prior decisions and precedents. So if we've conducted ourselves reasonably, such that people in the outside world would look at us and say, that was a reasonable decision, I think that's the standard that's going to be applied. If you ask me to define reasonable and come up with a definition that would stand the test of time, it, it's beyond my ability, and I'd respectfully submit, probably beyond the ability of just about anybody in the world. But there, brief as I could. My okay. question for you, Rich, is at this point here, we would have to change some language, so we'd have to come back with another updated document then? You, uh, Mr. I'm, Chairman, you could do it in one or two ways. I'm not too comfortable if, halfway. If if the board said, yes, we approve this with the caveat that everywhere 
that it calls for the BBC to give us an approval. Uh, you, can, you can approve it subject, and I'll have to try to write a motion for you, subject to the condition that the words such permission shall not be unreasonably withheld be inserted. You can approve, you can approve that because that's a very specific condition. That works for Why me. don't you go ahead and do that? That works for me. And we can All get right. this done then. Thank you. I'll write it up. That works for me. As long as we're protecting our... They just wrote another one on the fly here. Did you see that one? That's <laughs> okay. So I would be happy to incorporate those edits that That's Attorney good. Bowen is is including and provide that as a tracked version, meaning that the edits would pop out for you to see. Um, Thank you. Send it to Attorney Bowen as well as uh, Mr. Sullivan for for dissemination. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. that's that works good for me. I just want to make sure that we have a little more say. That was the whole point. Understood. Understood. And that sort of eliminates that issue, I believe. Peter, also when you get uh, Rich's, why don't you just read the motion? Yeah. Uh, and yes. actually, under the uh, reserved rights, which is the permitted uses, uh, there's only four places where it says with prior written approval, and those are under. Paragraph four, five, six, and ten. We'll proofread it before we sign. That's it. right. Yeah. No, that's right. But I think just giving counsel a heads up on where he needs to go with it. This isn't Shakespeare, but I think it'll do. <laughs> you want me to read this as the motion? Please. Okay, I move that the board approve the conservation restrictions subject to the provision that the phrase or equivalent be inserted, quote, such permission shall not be unreasonably withheld, unquote, in each place where the Buds Bay Coalition may give the town an approval. You need to say that's the, you need to say. So. Uh, as relates to the conservation restriction document uh, that has been provided to us, uh, it's an agreement between the town of Wareham and the Buds Bay Coalition that, that's uh, east side of Blackmore Pond Road, Wareham, Mass. Title reference book 41678 at page 311, Plymouth County Registry of Deeds. Should I say something about a plan of land on file with the clerk's office? Sure, two? Uh, I think we have. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Teitelbaum, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 5 0 0. No, Thank you, Madam. Um, uh, you, you, you certainly can, and I would have. That was yeah. between us and you. Now we're pledging the property. So Correct. It's separate. It is separate, but I, I am interested in getting that talked through and, and, uh, and addressed this evening as well. Okay. And before, just before we move on, I do have the signature page. Do you want me to hand it up and leave it with you? Um, uh, yeah, why don't you give us the signature page? Absolutely. Uh, obviously. And you know what else is? You have. Um, the actual department name that we're pledging this thing to? Yes. Is, is it? Uh, yes. It's in, it's in here. Yeah, it's the uh, United States Fish and Wildlife Service okay. under the Department of the Interior. It's Department of the Interior? U.S. Department of the okay. Interior Fish and Wildlife Services Division of... That way I won't have to look it up. All right. All right, so I move that we pledge the property at, uh, uh, that we have now under agreement um, with the Buzzes Bay Coalition Book 41678 at page 311 at the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds to the Department of Interior, Fisheries, and Wildlife Service Division of Bird Habitat Conservation. Interesting, huh? 5275 Leesburg Pike, Falls Church, Virginia. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Okay. No? Five zero zero. So I, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, in order for, there's no, no need to sign the document you have in front of you. Um, 
Mr. Sullivan, would you be able to put that on town letterhead? That would be fantastic. That that documents it, and then um, then the sign page, and we'll get it signed in the office, and then you can have it. Okay? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I think you have to sign it too, right? Yes. They yeah, do. you'll have to sign it as well, I'm sure, because but they should do it it's an agreement a which requires both parties to sign an agreement. So. But you have to sign it for a notary. So. <coughs> you have to sign it in front of a notary, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No we'll problem. get it done. No problem. Contract 101. Both mm -hmm. parties must sign and have a copy. <laughs> yes. True enough. True enough. <laughs> Thank Great. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. All right. Now, Patrick, we'll go to Steve. Would like to go to number F. Number F, okay. Uh, all right, we're going to move to any other town business not reasonably anticipated in 48 hours prior to posting of the meeting. Uh, just a minute, to see if we had a packet, <laughs> packet with the pictures and stuff. Do you have Steve's Yes, packet? the pictures went that way. Do you have uh, the You know pictures? what? They came back. So there you go. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my, I think this is my first time in five years having to use any other town business, but uh, we have an urgent matter here that needs to be addressed this evening, and I wanted to go before <laughs> Patrick because he's about to close warrant, and we may have a need to use the warrant. Uh, as you know, the board appointed me to uh, deal with uh, junk. It made me the junk czar. <laughs> junk czar. <laughs> well, um, unfortunately, we have a real urgent matter in this town. Uh, collectively, we have five, according to bylaw Article 2, we have the ability as selectmen to issue out five junk licenses. We have a secondary ability to issue out a maximum of five junk collector's <laughs> licenses, and we have the ability to issue out an unlimited number of pawn broker licenses. Um, it's come to our attention uh, this morning, oh, actually it was yesterday, I guess, uh, Saturday it started, uh, where we found a business operating as a junk dealer. Uh, no license, nothing, just out there uh, operating. On Sunday, I added about another seven to that list. Uh, and today, uh, obviously I went to town hall and didn't make any official uh, business of it until this evening. I did make Mr. Sullivan aware of it, uh, what I had found. Briefly, because I didn't ever really have any time to talk about it. So the issue is if we don't, the selectmen cannot obviously make policy that breaks law. So there's nothing that we can do as a board to fix the matter because we have to abide by town bylaws. Uh, unfortunately, what that also means is left in its current position after tonight, tomorrow I will be calling the Inspectional Services Department and these buildings will need to be shut down. They are operating legally within our town. They have illegal businesses going on, and they need to be shut down. Now that we know about it, now that it's public, there's no more hiding stuff for 15 or 20 years. I feel bad, but here's, my, here's why I'm asking to go before Patrick. Um, reading through the bylaws, I mean, I'd like, if I could, direct this through from the board to Mr. Bowen, in case I'm off, I want him to just tell me that's not an option, it is an option, and then maybe the board can uh, talk about it, okay? If we could do that real quickly. And Mr. Bowen, I threw Mr. Chairman to you. As I read through the second part of that, uh, Article 2, you talked about these uh, junk collectors, right? And what I came away with was I'm a guy that um, I go out and do an estate thing. The town calls me, Mr. Ethia calls me, go clean up this parcel. It's been abandoned. So I take the stuff, I go to the dump, whatever's left over, I have the ability to sell it, right? And that was uh, what I gathered from the junk collector's license. The board has the authority to issue up to five of those. So I checked real quick and I checked my email just before the meeting. Uh, so far, 
uh, from what I can gather, we have issued zero. The gentleman who I thought was a junk collector is actually on the junk dealers list. The older gentleman with the baseball cap there. I can't think of his name right off the top of my head. So I don't know if these types of businesses that are open, they're like flea markets. Uh, they, have, they, they do go out and clean out estates. They do get calls from banks, they, some of them. I don't know if those people would qualify under a junk collector's license. So that's question number one. It doesn't solve all of our problem, but it may solve some of it. That was the question, the first question. With your permission, Mr. Chairman. Uh, under Division Two, Article Two, Section One, you've got two different types of licenses. Uh, the junk collector, to which Selectman Holmes referred, and then also the junk shop license. Uh, under the terms of the bylaw, a junk collector is someone who goes out and does exactly, exactly as Selectman Holmes suggests. They go out, they collect junk. Uh, compare that with the junk shop license. A junk shop license is a shop where secondhand items are sold. Uh, it it could be Sotheby's with $10,000 antique grandfather clocks. At the end of the day, an antique clock is nothing but a secondhand item. So you can call yourself an antique shop, you can call yourself whatever you want. In the eyes of the law, in the eyes of the town's bylaws, you are a junk shop. So the only real difference to my way of seeing this between a junk shop and a junk collector as a junk collector is somebody who goes out and collects junk, keeps it, may resell it to other parties, but however that person chooses to conduct his or her or its business, it is not conducted in a shop. It may not be conducted in a shop. If you want to conduct, conduct the sale or, <coughs> or even the collection of secondhand goods in a shop, you need a junk dealer's license. So one has a shop, the other has a pickup truck. Okay, so the and you're not to that selling off the pickup truck in town either. Okay, <laughs> so the answer to that to that question is no. So the second question is when you move down through the article, the next question comes up as a pawn license that the selectmen have the ability and have the authority to issue. Uh, there is no number of a pawn of a pawn uh, broker's license. So with a store like that, with someone selling a secondhand goods. Could they be considered a pawn shop? Uh, with your permission, again, Mr. With Chairman, through you to with your permission Mr. Chairman, the answer is it depends. <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. If yeah, that's a lawyer answer for you. It depends. <laughs> depends on what they're doing. If they're just selling secondhand goods, the answer is no. If they are receiving secondhand goods and in receipt and in return for receiving those secondhand goods are loaning the person who brought the item in money at a specified rate, then it's a pawn shop. And then typically the way they work is after a certain number of days, if you don't repay the loan, the pawn shop gets to keep the item. So the key difference between a pawn shop and a junk shop is not that they both deal in secondhand goods, because they do, it's that one gives you a loan and the other one just says, here's 10 bucks for that antique uh, whatever. Can, can, the, can, that, can the third point of the pawn shop have a mixed use? In other words, uh, does every item that comes in the door have to go out as a loan? Or can you, have, uh, can you uh, um, sell something to somebody as well as front the loan? Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I went down to Dominic's place, and we all know Dominic, right? So I can mention him, and he's got a guitar there. And I go in, I want to buy that guitar, I just go in and buy the guitar and pay him, right? You know, I, no, so I'll, I'll say I don't know if the If I answer. was the guy who brought him the guitar, typically he would give me a loan on that guitar. That's oh, I'd right. give him the thing, he'd give me 500 bucks, I have to pay him back. After a certain day, he could sell my guitar, That's right? right? I, don't, I don't know the answer to that one. But it's iffy. I mean, the majority of the business would have to be that loan type business. But upon, <laughs> upon so my final question, and this is why I thing. asked, one question. I'm a sorry. pawn shop, the only way they can sell something is if the particular item has gone past that time frame of the loan. 
Yeah, uh, 30 right. days. But I think it's, the, uh, 30 the, days. the variation that Steve was throwing out there was, uh, suppose I wanted to take the old guitar I have at home, uh, go, I, I won't pick on Don, but go down to a, yeah. a, a, pawn, a pawn shop and say, look, I don't, I don't want to uh, pawn this. I just want to sell it to you. Right. You know, just give me the money. You know, forget about me trying to redeem it. Let's be serious. You know, it's a nice old guitar. Give me a hundred bucks. No, I'll give you fifty. Okay, we'll split the difference at seventy-five. Right. And then that guitar then goes on the shelf at one hundred and fifty dollars. There's no loan attached to it, and somebody comes in and pays one twenty-five. Right. So your question is, can you do that under a pawn license, or do you need a second-hand junk a, a junk dealer license? Right. And my answer is, I'm not sure. I I suspect that if you're operating as a second-hand uh, item business and not loaning money, you probably do. But I'm not going to say that we do because there could be, it could be like zoning where you have, you know, the majority activity is such and such and you get an incidental thing. I don't know the answer. Okay. Thank you. That's fair enough. So, yeah. my, so my final question. May I, Mr. Holmes, I'm sorry. That doesn't make any sense at all. That I don't know the answer. Be, it's be, unusual that he doesn't know the answer, I agree. Uh, but he has to think about it. Right, That's but okay. if a pawn shop, I don't know what percentage of the things are not redeemed within whatever the period of time is. Most. Most, Most of the things are not redeemed within the period of time. So then, of course, the pawn shop owner has to sell or dispose of those right. things. So, of course, he's selling them again. Yeah. That's the answer to your question. No. No. No, it's, no, no, it's how they no, come my in. My answer was, Judy, Judy, if you brought me that guitar, in, instead of giving you the yeah. loan for the 500 bucks, I just gave you 100 bucks and said, here you go, I bought it from you, as opposed to getting a loan. Is that, does that fall under the pawn? Or can it be just a second hand uh, without the, uh, right? That was the. So your, your question really is, it's how it comes in, not, yes. okay. Yes. Right. Patrick, okay. <coughs> Patrick made a comment. I remember I was switching stations. I saw a TV program called Pawn Brokers yeah. out of Las Vegas. Well, pawn they, Stars, yeah. Pawn Stars. Yeah. Now, they yeah, may be a different law in Las Vegas, but <laughs> people come in there all the time with, with items, and, sell them out, right? and they basically, I like so much for it, and they go back and forth, and they just sell it, and it's a pawn, it is a pawn shop. There's a yeah. Detroit everywhere. They have right. them now all over the place, and they we do exactly. This they do a, we have a specific... Yeah bylaw that spells all this out but I think I think I think the state has a thing about a, a law about pawn shops and what they can do and what they can't do do they yeah. not? in terms of the interest rates being charged and things like that you're, right. the state has you, were, you were thinking of Las Vegas <laughs> the yeah, state I, the state does regulate the interest that you can charge over that period of time they do have some regulations on that but ours is pretty yeah but anyway, the business would have to be more 99% pawn and maybe 1% sale to even qualify, correct? Well, you know, I, Mr. Chairman, a couple things. One, uh, I don't know the law of Las Vegas. No, I, mean, I, do, I, do know, I do know some of their laws are a bit different from ours. You've been acquainted with them out right. there, have you? I, I've, so, read, I've read I wanna, stories. I don't want to take up a lot no, more time because no, no, again, no, this no, is an emergency item and I don't, and I don't have a lot of answers. That's but but I, I will be happy to look into the question of to what extent a pawn shop that's just doing a you know okay. a, a junk dealer business needs a, a, another license. I appreciate that. Because I think that's the question. As I appreciate that. As references our current bylaws. Our pawn shop does have a Vers does have a, versus a, also a what the state laws are uh, as well. So we junk see, yeah. see who is more restrictive. Yeah, yeah, he does. To, you're they looking do. to free one up. Yeah, our our pawn shop in town on Main Street does have a junk dealer's license as well. So they do, they do carry so both. So I know what you're going for. Um, okay, my last question is this. Uh, since this is a bylaw that uh, states that we can only have, uh, the Board of Selectmen is only authorized to issue five of these junk licenses. So in order to change the bylaw, you have to go back to town meeting. Yeah. My question to you is this very simply. Not saying there's no debate or discussion on what this board would do in the future, but my question to you is this, as a town council and moderator and everything else that you have under that hat, is there any way that before Patrick closes this, this evening, that we could get an article on this special warrant 
that says um, the town of Wareham, uh, you know, Peter could whip something up in 30 seconds just saying that the, the, uh, the Board of Selectmen would be authorized to issue 15 okay. junk licenses. With your permission, Mr. Chairman. If you give me a number and three quiet minutes, I will write an article for you. Would I be able to? Would we be able to do that to get it considered in April as opposed to November? Oh heck! I just wrote one. Yeah. Two two beginning of the meeting. Ago. Okay. Yeah. So Patrick, <laughs> uh, so he's Mr. already warmed I up. Thank the board right, for their indulgence, <laughs> and I would ask Patrick to hold <laughs> off on closing any warrants yeah, we're going for a few the, minutes. We're going through the just tell first. Me. How, how okay. many? We'll be fine. I'm just asking Patrick. No, how many, how many no licenses? Okay. How many no licenses? Uh, uh, well, no. we can't really have a discussion about that because I, I would say 15. No. It's Article 15, so. Right. It's Article 15. I would say that, that <laughs> we would need to add, Mr. <laughs> Bowen, currently it's five, and you would need to add 15 to make it 20. Okay. Total of 20. Okay. Are we just on the on the junk shop license? No, are we doing something? Mr. Mr. Right. Chairman, I apologize for no, that. It's okay. but, this is know, on the 40 hours, out. so it's an agenda. May I item. ask a question? This is Whiteside. This is a procedural question. If the <coughs> if the article goes in with 20 and the town meeting <coughs> thinks that they really only want 10, they can do that. that. They can do. They can't go to 21. No, going down. They can go down. They may Correct. not go up. No. He just said that. It's a bylaw, so it, no, no, no. I mean, it ultimately it's a question. It's the moderator's call as to whether it's within the scope of the article. Right. I will tell you, and, and my opinion is not binding on Ms. Smith, uh, that were I moderator, I would not allow an uh, upward amendment. But that's because this is a highly regulated area under the town bylaws, and going from five to twenty. That's a good it's jump. A, it's a big steep. It's a it's thing. a big jump, um, but again, my opinion is just my opinion. And this is going to be a junk shop What'd license say, increase, correct? I'm sorry. Did you say we could we could go up but not down? We like could go down but not up. We could go down but not up. At, at town meeting. At town meeting. I want to write it for twenty five, please. Oh. Oh. You really just oh. through you? Uh, if you can go down. Selectman Holmes, do you really think we have that many out there? Oh, yeah, we have quite a few. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but guys, you're missing the point. You're designing a law to take care of people who are already no, doing not, something without no, a oh license. No, time out, Mr. Chairman. Let's stop one, there. That, that crossed the line because yeah. I'm not asking the board to do anything. All I'm asking is whether we can put an article on town meeting. That's all. Okay. That's all I'm asking. I'm not saying that we would ever issue the sixth license. Okay, what I'm saying... All that does is authorize the board. It doesn't say the board can issue... A, a, doesn't say the board will issue 25. It just says that the board may. may. Okay. You don't have to I, issue a, another one. Okay. I'm I not apologize in favor of all of them. for I'm just that. But you can't be picky. If, if you have 10 available or 15 available, then don't you take the first 15 that qualify? No. That qualifies. The that qualifies. That is the point. Yeah. None of them may qualify in our eyes as to what we want to see around town for buildings and dirt and filth and everything else. None of them may qualify. And I think that before, and I don't want to get off, I don't want to cross the line here between an emergency <laughs> discussion and this discussion mm -hmm. because quite frankly, I think before we issue number six, this board needs to sit down and draw up a list of qualifications because we don't have any. Right now it's, hey, Joe, you're next in line. Yeah, there's one open. I think we need to have that discussion before we issue out number six. All I'm trying to do is, before we go out shutting all these people down, uh, Mr. Sullivan has to, is at least get something on the books. And hey, look, in April they may say, you know what, guys? We're only going to let you have the five. We may not get any. Well, right? I, I so, hear what you're saying, and then I would suggest that Mr. Slavin put um, some suggestions or call for some suggestions in three weeks time so that we have a list of what we might consider to be things that the board would as the uh, junk czar i've already started working as on the it. junk czar yeah so could you do that within the next two weeks or three weeks sure. and yeah. have it to yeah. us yeah that would make me feel a whole lot better than just thank you yeah so i so you know i know i found at least 15 and that i only went i found three and i only went 
down that uh, section of Cranberry Highway. I didn't go to other areas, Mr. Tidebaum, so. Yeah. Um, okay. somebody, somebody's gonna lose out. Not everybody's gonna get a license because we just don't, there's no way that I could even support that many. Mr. Bone. But I wanna get into that question. Question for you before we continue on this. Yes, sir. If, if we want conditions, I don't believe the board can I impose conditions unless the bylaw gives some in place. overall, you know, guidelines. We just well, we just did on the last person so who came in before us. We told him he couldn't have stuff outside. I know we did that because uh, there was question. But I'm just saying you get to a point where I think it's a problem as you're well, picking and choosing. Well, I think we're gods of junk, actually, under the law, though. I don't yeah. know if we are. Well, are we? It, you are, uh, uh, it, if I may, Mr. Chairman. The, the junk statute, it's chapter 140 section, I think it's 54, gives you the power to revoke a junk dealer license for that. no reason at all. Th there's practically no place in the law that gives you that almost kingly power. And, and moving from that kingly power, I think if you can revoke <laughs> something me. for no cause at all, you can certainly apply conditions. My question would be then, is it appropriate for this board to write a policy of the guidelines of what they want to do rather than do it as part of the bylaw well, i just like well, to see well, some we, yeah. no, we wouldn't do this yeah i don't see why not can you have a policy regarding i don't want to get off topic here i think you, yeah. I think you amend the bylaw Patrick you Wade. change the bylaw to the change the number up and then this board creates the conditions under which I, they would be granted. I, I wouldn't put it in the bylaw, and I'll tell you why. No. Because yeah. the statute has given you this vast grant of authority to act as you see fit. And if you start process. putting uh, fetters on your own right. ability to do right as you see it, we can then you're that, fettered. We but, can do that as a policy. But that would, yes. that would really not matter, because if state law is more restrictive, the state law you know, rules, not ours. Well, the state, point. The point here is the state law would control regardless of what the bylaw said. So why, yeah. why, why really write it into so the bylaw? Why, just, the bylaw therefore. is the number. That's all we need for yeah. the bylaw. So therefore, that's, the conversation is. is I, I don't want to have this conversation getting going over. I had okay. an emergency thing to bring up. It still falls under the overall piece. It's fine. Okay. It really is. I don't think we need to be discussing all that. Thank you. Well, okay. when Patrick's ready, he'll let us know, and we can introduce right. that. We're going to go first. We're going to go through the articles that we haven't put on the warrant yet. Thank the you. first one is the Oak, Oakdale Playground. Um, this is one that we approved uh, by error on the regular town warrant, and that's just to go back for the special only. So I make a motion. We put the Oak, Oak uh, Oakdale Playground, uh, it's CPC, right? Yes. On to the uh, special town meeting warrant. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions of the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. And if you looked, you guys Hold all on got. Hold on, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just uh, why don't we go through Article One and just through the rest because I think they were. We've done them all. Sir. We did them all. They're all on. Our, I believe Article Five uh, is they were renumbered as they were placed in there. They so. did. That's so wonderful. I'm just looking at that. So I would suggest why don't we go through Article One and just say that's in there. Article Two. All right. Go ahead. Line item transfer is number one. Sure. FY15 capital plan is two. Harbor service Sorry. permits is number three. Yeah. Tax title collection revolving fund number four. Oh boy, another revolving fund. Boy, the state ought to love us. Plymouth County OPEB OPEB. Trust, OPEB, Police Union. No, you, you the skipped number should five. Have Article five. No, I just read five. No, you didn't. You read, Healthcare trust you read six. I just read the Plymouth no, County no. OPEB. From the updated warrant itself, the physical warrant. No, you got to do this one. Oh, this one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Didn't take that and convert it properly. Hold on, I'll convert it. Hold on, give me a second. I guess they did mess it up, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. It's All just right. a, it's we'll a fix it. It's only a test. All right. I prefer enhanced. Yes, they enhanced <laughs> it. You enhanced right. it, all right. <laughs> okay. Word. Enhanced. All right, so here we are. We got capital plan, then the Hobbit service permit. Yeah, That's the same, enhanced. right? Yep. That's the same. Number four is Chapter 60, Section 15B of the Acts Established Tax Title. Next We've got that one. Next, That's correct. Next one's wrong. The next one is wrong. So the next one will be the Health Insurance Trust, which will be number five. I'm going to put it in here. Health correct. Insurance Trust, which will be number five. <coughs> and that will change 
the OPEB to number six, right? Yep. And then what will happen is the police union will be seven, yep. right? Yep. The mm -hmm. Agawam Cemetery will be eight. No, no. lots no. and graves number is eight. Number eight, lots and graves first. But we got to move them out of order. Eight is lots and graves. Hold on a minute. Yes, you're right. Lots and graves. Okay. Then the so, Agawam Cemetery. Wow. Just put it in the right boy. We did that at the meeting. We you know, that. we are just. It's only a test. Oh, it's it's only a test. Okay, hold on. Right. I'm just going to change them around here. Hold on a minute. All right, so seven, that'll be eight, that'll be nine. Okay, Ten. so eight will be lots and graves. Number nine will be the Agawam uh, Cemetery. Ten. All right, number 10 will then become the additional liquor license. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And number 11 will be the Oak Grail Playground. Mm -hmm. yep. Number uh, number 12 will then be, hold on, let me get my magic sheet over here. Rescinding Will be bond. the rescinding the authorization to bond. We're gonna have to vote on that. And there's a whole bunch of those. We still have to vote on yep. to put that on, by the way. Correct. Mm -hmm. Then Allen Street will be number 13. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, number and then 14, 14 will be the generator. Generator. Okay. And number 15 will be and Mr. Bowen's. 15 will be the one Mr. Bowen's working on. Steve. What, what do you want to title it? All right. All right, so let's do it this way. Let's uh, say, let's vote on, we're going to put, we're going to go through, we're going to go through our, to, through, um, through, through, let's see, through. Article through 11. 11. We're going to go through 11. And as far as the reorganization, I move we put in the articles 1 through 11 as read. Second. Motion by Mr. Title. Excuse me, motion by Mr. Tropiano. Spacey. Second. Second by Mrs. Whiteside. And White this is the special town meeting this for April 27th. Special, special town meeting. meeting. That's what we're dealing with. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zeros. Now that's interesting because that doesn't, that means I don't have to change it here. Right. <laughs> that works out great. Thanks, Steve, for that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, number 12. Except for uh, five, zero, zero. Okay. Next would be um, number 12, rescind the prior year's bond authorizations. Uh, I move we uh, put it on the special Second. town meeting. Motion by Mr. Tropio. Second. Second by Mrs. White side. White side. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four, zero, zero. And uh, no, 13 would be the Allen Street um, um, thing. Uh, what do you call it? Allen Street uh, acceptance, vote. right? Yeah. Uh, I move that we put that on. Actually, is that a petition article or is it ours? That's a no, that's ours. That's is it ours? Okay. It's ours. All right, so I move we put Allen Street on. Second. Number 13. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Quick question for Mr. Sullivan. Do we know what this is? <laughs> yes, the, this was uh, at the 2008 Fall Town meeting. A uh, piece of property was taken out of the custody of the treasurer collector okay. and put in custody of the Board of Selectmen to sell the piece of property by the, um, through the 30B process. That has never been done. It's a residential lot that has no, uh, that's not built upon, there's some encroachment, but uh, this will allow us to sell it as we have through the uh, the prior auction, <laughs> which we have been very successful. So okay. instead of uh, going through that process, we'd like to see it be brought back to realistically its proper place. Any other questions from the board? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay, the next one will be a generator article. And this one is to see if the town will vote to amend the action taken under Article 6 of the 2010 Fall Town Meeting by adding the words and police station following the words upgrade of generator, multi-service building, or take any other action relevant <coughs> there to. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions of the board? None heard, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, all four right. zero zero. Number 15 will be the junk. Peter, you want to read it since you're closest? Yeah, good, Peter. Okay, okay here it is. Article 15, amendment to junk dealer bylaw to see if the town will vote to amend Division 2, Article 2, Section 1 by deleting from the first sentence the word, quote, 5, unquote, and inserting in its place the phrase 25, unquote, unquote, or take any other action relative thereto. Second. Motion by Mrs. Teitelbaum, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions from the board? None heard. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Did okay. you want to? Do you want to take a revote and select when Holmes comes back? We can make it the. No, it's fine. Holmes Memorial uh, Amendment. I move no. we close the special town meeting for April twenty seventh, two thousand fifteen. Second. Motion by Ms. Tropiano, second by Mrs. Whiteside. Any questions of the board? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay. Now we're All on right. to. Now uh, we're on to discuss the votes of the regular town meeting. Right. And I have. Um, Mr. Sullivan, do you have any more information for us on most of these left of yours? Favorable action votes. Do you have anything you want us to do tonight? Uh, Are you ready for us on anything yet? I have it scheduled for the 24th and 31st also. We don't want to sign this. Why should we do the whole one? Why are we signing this? It has to be redone and resigned. You want to wait? Yeah, why don't we just wait until you get the budget? Yeah, I think you know? Mr. Dutch, I think, is coming to the uh, FinCom. I don't think we've made arrangements. It might be that we may have to go s do it as a joint meeting. I'm not sure yet. I would recommend that it's done as a joint meeting. I mean, every year we have them come twice and then to town meeting as well. I, I hope it's not tomorrow. That's the problem because we haven't posted it for this. I know something about what I'm uh, The roof and boiler for Deacon School, we didn't vote on that. That's uh, Hold off on that too or not? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the school article. Then. Did the they come article. before you on that one yet? They came before us to explain what it was, yes. Yeah. But they haven't taken a vote on it themselves. Okay, I would, yeah, I would ask, I would think the school committee would act on it. And then. All right, we will hold off on all that. We'll continue that for next week. Right, Item well. number C, I don't think anybody has any paperwork. Uh, I brought this up uh, for discussion. Mr. Holmes needs to be here for this as well. This was originally his uh, request that anybody using town property would pay, a, and, they, and if any organization had vendors, they would pay a vendor fee. The only thing I'm bringing up on this subject is if someone is a nonprofit organization, do we want to exempt them and only charge the vendor fees for those that are running an operation which is a profit making organization using town property? This isn't the vendor fee. That's my question. <laughs> what is your question again, please? We, we passed a basic policy. Anybody using town property yep. that has, has vendors as part of, say, you have a Cape Verdean festival you, or whatever you have. When they run those particular events that we're paying, they're, they're going to have to pay $25 per Each vendor such party, that right. they have outside of their organization. Mm -hmm. okay. My question is, do we want to exempt nonprofit organizations for that vendor fee? Mm -hmm. No, it's the person putting on the event. Because what they do is they usually you'll rent space out, and that $25 fee is probably going to come out of them, may not come out of the, the vendor that comes there, which could affect the, the nonprofits. It's a question I thought we should bring up anyways, because it's... Most we have them both ways. But 90% of these people are nonprofits. Well, both, I'm just bringing up the question. You know what I'm saying? 90% of them are nonprofits. I, 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 I agree with. I agree with Selectman Tropiano. If we were to exempt nonprofits from having to collect the vendor fees, we might as well then, just get rid uh, of then we might as well just just get rid of the policy altogether. I don't think. It's okay. This is why I say. I agree with my compatriots um, when we discussed this roundly. Um, we talked about many nonprofit organizations and we made the policy. Mr. Tropiano? Uh, I, I think we have to leave it the way it is. I mean, that we, we just talked about this not too long right, ago. Exactly. Just to and okay. we need to That's charge the fee. That's end of discussion. And I'm not a fee person, you know that. <laughs> You've always said we have no seen a fee we didn't like. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. All right. I just brought it up for discussion. Thank right. you. Next up is uh, we need to vote on the seasonal renewal certificate for 2014. Uh, licenses who failed to renew zero, license disapproved zero. Um, we hereby certify that we have determined that the premises described in all of the 2050 renewal applications by us and forwarded to the ABC are now occupied, used, or controlled by the licensee and will be on April 1st, 2015. Second. Motion by Mr. Tropiano, second by Mr. Teitelbaum. Any questions from the board? Mrs. Whiteside. Yeah, it says, it, it, Mr. Tropiano read the motion to say zero. There is no zero on either of the places where it should say zero. I am the kind of person that thinks that if it says zero, it needs to say zero. 
as right. opposed to, oh, she forgot to put it in Mr. there. Mr. would you like to put zero in the two I just blocks? added zeros into the box. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? <laughs> no. <None laughs> it's all up to you. Blank wasn't there. good enough. It had to be zero. Yeah. None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero. Aye, zero. Captain. All right, we have no bills. Uh, uh, Richard, we didn't get a bill from you no, recently? He, no. He hasn't submitted one I think two you're months. due. We're overdue. Uh, yeah, you know. are. Two months. Yeah, you, you would you uh, you mind uh, you know so we don't get too far behind. Thank you. Send us some money. Uh, send us a bill. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have minutes. Um, I move we approve the minutes of the regular selectman sewer commissioners meeting for January twentieth, two thousand fifteen. Uh, second as corrected. There was a small. Correction. Well, Already made. Didn't they correct motion by Mrs. Yeah. Whiteside. Okay. Actually, motion by Mr. Tropiano. Second by Mrs. Whiteside with correction. Yep. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Yeah, it should be 401. Thank you. Okay, next up, regular uh, minutes of the regular sewer, uh, selectman sewer commissioners meeting from, fe from February 24th. 2015 and let me see is there any corrections yes on this one? there was a correction oh, on this a, one there's a spelling correction here as well second motion by mr tropiano with correction second by mrs whiteside any questions none heard all in favor aye opposed abstain five zero zero no four zero one oh, steve was out sorry four zero one yeah. don't have the copies in front of me that's okay next up is the regular selectman sewer commissioners meeting of march the third 2015 with corrections no corrections wait a minute you sure you sure yep no spelling, Gee, no no spelling errors no wow jeez i thought i saw one on the just end but it isn't it's just a pen <laughs> line. motion by I mr tropiano <laughs> second by mrs whiteside <laughs> no questions all in favor aye opposed abstain five zero zero all right zero thank one. you thank you very much four zero one. Steve again four zero one so. One zero one. Next up is the uh, town administrator's report, please. Keep it short. We've been concentrating, obviously, on the special town meeting warrant and the budget. So, nothing, nothing really new. I know nothing? we're receiving lots of complaints about County Road. Um, last week, they had gone out there and put hot patch down, but with the snow melt and such, it just didn't take. Uh, they're trying again this week during hopefully one of. The dry sunny days the machine they have they they literally they heat up the insides of that it's got a, it's got a little torch on there and such uh, they're working on it we are obviously working on a greater plan for county road i know we talk about it here and um, not everybody is tuned in to, it's not the greatest entertainment actually, i guess actually when, when but you we try and give as when much information when you were out on your little jaunt like i'll i'll repeat the information to you in a few okay minutes. did it, i missed that you missed something so then I'll I will finish. Thank okay. you all. Thank you. All right. Next up, liaison hey, uh, reports, Patrick, Mr. Taylor. Hey, you know what? Can I just make a quick Go comment ahead. on that? Absolutely. You know, last week I was in uh, in Indiana, and they had had a foot of snow, and the roads were. I mean, you know, we have some potholes here. Their roads were no better, and they had one of those boxes. <coughs> it was like it was being pulled by the DPW. Yeah. Inside there, I mean, you could. It's not like ours with, you know, they dump it on the back and then you go around and shovel it. No, the new it machine was inside does. of that heater box. Yeah. I mean, they were taking that stuff out of me. It was smoking. Yeah, that's, what, Boston, that's what the new machine is. Yeah, we have yeah, a whole, we don't have whole one of those in Boston heater we boxes. Like we, we still do. <coughs> oh, it does work. He just said it didn't, it didn't take. It didn't last, take. Last week it didn't take down on County Road. Oh, it's still, it still too cold. It's still too cold. The ground is too cold. Even though even though the tar gets hot, it's still a problem? Yeah, it even has a hearing to It needs to be. Yeah. They put a, a thing in between yeah. to try to make it adhere, but when it's too cold, it's it just won't take the binder. And we actually, they, they're talking about they're not opening up what the uh, asphalt plants till, they don't think till sometime in April. So right. thank, thank goodness we have that machine to use. Yeah, really be in trouble. All right, Mr. Teitelbaum, liaison reports. Uh, just cemetery commissioners met last week and uh, we're ecstatic to have the opportunity to add to the Agawam Cemetery uh, the articles on the town meeting warrant. Uh, Aren't you the cemetery? It's like my white side isn't, well, she asked me to be there, so I'm stealing her thunder since she took my time. Uh, 
picture. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this, this is an opportunity to acquire uh, over two acres to add to Agawam Cemetery. It will serve to protect an area that's been in dispute uh, with past property owners as to whether there are actually people buried there or not. Uh, at some point, we'll probably have to commission a ground penetrating radar survey to see if there's actually ancient graves there. Uh, what? No GPS? Not in Massachusetts, according to me. Oh, for God's sakes. Well, anyway, we'll figure out if there's people buried there and if there are, we'll properly memorialize them. <laughs> this is why it's sad. <laughs> Got nothing left? Did he steal all your funding? Well, <laughs> you, you might as well finish it off. Um, <laughs> no, um, I want to congratulate the Council on Aging for um, the new Council on Aging for its activities and joining in for the library fundraising for the mini golf. Um, the Veterans Council seems to be very active and coming up with some really good ideas um, and forwarding those ideas to the town. So uh, both the Council on Aging, well, the cemetery commissioners as well, and the um, Veterans Council um, are really active communicating within the community and um, doing good stuff. So let's keep doing good stuff. Mr. Holmes. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the, uh, on the uh, junk czar business, you know, most of you know that I started this really, um, this all really started as part of the Bay Point project uh, in the embarrassment of having to ask out-of-towners to come to Depot Street so they wouldn't come by Cranberry Highway. And at least when they came out to Bay Point, they would come through onto the village. So that's where the whole beautification thing started. And then last year, um, you know, we I started, to, we all praised people who did well in their shops and things. Well, you know, then we started working on the junk things, and I'm happy to be your junk czar. Um, however, um, as noted earlier tonight, um, you know, we need. To, I think we found at least the potential of the board being able to try to help resolve our junk license problem, if town meeting goes along with it. Uh, but we have a, this is like a serious <coughs> um, underground mafia economy i gotta tell you yeah and let me tell you my phone uh anonymous i think alan's gotten some of these too but as i've gotten involved in this i mean it gets pretty these people are serious people you know we we awarded a license here what a few months ago and so that guy's happy and his friends are happy but his friends and i told you this was going to happen they're dropping a dive on all the others so we do something one or the others, and they're all dropping dimes. Well, that's why I say we started with a few, and 25 isn't even going to touch this. However, my, my uh, so I think maybe we'll get something done there. I'm going to continue to beat this drum. I don't care how ugly the messages get. If you're going to open a business in this town, you're going to do it legally. And you're going to do it so it's clean so that when people drive by, you have a presentation of what Wayham should and will stand for. I will not stand for junk, clutter, podunk in front of buildings. Today, and I need uh, the board's uh, help on this, I told you as long, I would continue to do this for you as long as you support me. Today, uh, just prior to the meeting, on March 17th, if I may, Mr. Chairman, and then I'd like to submit this to Mr. Trapiano as part of the record for the meeting. On March 17th, 2015, this was uh, given to me today by the health agent. Um, uh, on site was a patrolman from the Wareham Police Department, a fire inspector from the onset fire department, uh, Wareham Board of Health members, Mr. Ethier, our Board of Health agent. On 2.30 on March 17th, which was today, Onset Fire Department informed Mr. Lewis of egress, exit sign, and furnace issues. The Wareham Board of Health personnel took photos of debris 
scattered around the front and the side of the building. And Mr. Ethier informed Mr. Lewis of violations of permit requirements. They left the scene at 3.30, so there was five or six of our representatives there uh, for an hour. This site, and I showed you the pictures, and I give this to Patrick, and I would ask Janet and Shirley if they wouldn't mind to make copies of these and make sure that every member gets a copy, as well as Mr. Bowen and Mr. Sullivan. Um, and this is the permit that we just issued two months ago, number five, and put restrictions on it that there was to be no stuff outside the building. Here are the pictures from today. Uh, once again, an underground mafia of junk. This was reported by people on the other side. So Mr. Chairman, um, I mean, if you would indulge me at this point, or I could go back and ask to open 8F. I'd like for you to uh, put on your calendar to schedule a public hearing, as the bylaws of Wayham permit, uh, to bring this owner in. And I would think we'd have to wait a couple of weeks to get that done, Alan, because we need the rest of Mr. Ethia's report. The onset five people will be issuing you a report <coughs> as well. And if we could get a public hearing scheduled to bring this owner in, and discuss the future of his license. Thank I'll take you. Care of that. And I'm not going to stop. So anybody who thinks that I'm going to stop, the board gave me a job to do, and I'm going to do it. And uh, I hope to God that you know people have three weeks to decide on whether they want more junk businesses license or not. So when the time comes, and if it don't happen, and when all these places will have to shut down then don't blame Steve Holmes, blame town meeting. Thank you. Mr. Tropiano. I just want to ask a question. Um, what's the deal with the tie-in bond thing? Uh, we were supposed we to have a, we were supposed to have a meeting. Tie-in bond. Tie-in bond. We're running out of time. Yeah, we are. Tie-in bond was supposed to, we were supposed to meet with Mike, and I'm not sure what happened because it should have been this past week, uh, to sit down and just do some parameters and then I believe where the status is right now, I think Susan was going to invite the different uh, participants running for sewer commissioner to try and get a day when they all could come in. And I saw that email go out. I well, think she sent it out for the uh, water commission. Water commission, but I don't think she sent the other one out yet. No, yeah, the other one that's been trying to, that one's going to have to be put forth. We're just going to have to decide a date all right. because you don't have the time to, to, to basically pamper anyone on this either they can make it or they can't yeah the other yeah. thing I think Patrick's asking is is time bond ready to come back to us I with, with some more report. information because if this board is either going to make a change or make a an endorsement but we've only got a month and a half to finish it yeah I mean I want to see that report I want I want to have time to look at it before no, we make I'm any not that's why I'm making the comment the usage. yeah so, yeah one. have they got the report ready yet no when do they expect to have this report? I think they need more help from us, and they stopped some of the some of the Ford progress because they're waiting to meet with the water commissioners. Haven't been able to align that. There's been, unfortunately, there's about ten different moving parts on this. Yeah. So if it was just work they were doing, they would have been done six weeks ago. I think the water commissioners. I saw the me the meeting is no, it's not. But you know, uh, March twenty third for the water is, commissioners. Correct. This is a shame. I know. We're this trying. This is a shame. We're trying. And you know what? We talked about this, that it was going to be tight. We had to have it in March, yeah. so on and forth. When they came and sat in front of us, oh, yeah, no problem. We're going to be able to handle it, whatever. And now, all of a sudden, we're waiting for water commissioners and everything else. Look, the, how we're going to put the list together and what we are going to do for zones and how much and all that has nothing to do with the water commissioners. The water commissioners, all they're going to do is allow us to use their water records. That has nothing to do with what the fees are going to be and all that stuff, which they, I hope they have by now. We're not disagreeing. We just haven't had a meeting yet. We need to get a meeting. Well, uh, you need it tomorrow. You need that meeting yesterday. That would uh, be illegal. No. This is tell him if you can, reach out to Michael to see what he has available. We need to all, I, I really need yeah. to get the sewer commissioners that are, that are actually applying for the job yep. to have some idea where we're at. And I think he's they'll probably know as much as we will. You know, he's been hounding us. So. I know he has. Who has? Okay. Ty and Bob. So. Oh, they've been hounding us? Yeah. Yes. We've been trying to get the, the other meeting set up because we'd said 
we would do that before we'd have the next one in front of the board of selectmen. Right. We're trying to arrange everybody, and we can pound our fists and be angry as much as we want, but we, they are, they've been doing the work. So. Well, then let's just schedule the meeting. Right now, we'll schedule a meeting. Let's schedule a meeting and make it. Let's do it at if night. If they want to come, they come. If they don't, then that's too bad. we got to move on. Well, the sewer night, the problem is it's the third week of the month. We've put you the third week in April, and that's, to me, that's too late already. That's way too late. Why don't we do something like this? Let's figure out maybe on a Thursday we have a special meeting on this. Yeah, side. just have a separate special meeting. Yeah, let's do a special them. meeting. Yeah, do it at night. Yeah. A week from this Thursday. And we do it all the time with the Thursday? school department sure and everybody special. else. This is important enough to have a special it's night. It's going to be tight. Do next Thursday, and then it'll, they'll at least be informed as to what. Look, you've got a cup. You've got a, a contested seat there at least for the election. Yeah. Can't These people should have an opportunity to at least hear it what it's to, about. If on Thursday it would have to be daytime because you have, you have OPL next week, I believe. Well, and then do it Wednesday. Yeah, do it Wednesday night. Do it at night so nobody has a reason not to come. Okay. Let's do it Wednesday night. I Day say. Night. What's the next Wednesday night? What's the Derek, date? See if you can see if it can see be if arranged. you can get Ty and Bond to come, and then we'll we'll make the date. Okay. That's all we can do. It's, it's like the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. That's it. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Otherwise, we're kicking the can down the road, <coughs> and we're not going to get what we want. You know, but we really do all to the resource commissioners coming in to give them an update. Yeah, they, you know, we'll, you know what? Look, we're still the sewer commissioners. Okay. And until they take uh, office on May first, we're still the sewer commissioners. Me. Yep. No, not That's right. And we have to keep functioning like we are. Okay. Uh, let me go back again. Derek wasn't in. I'll, re I'll repeat what <laughs> I had earlier. Backwards. I'm going backwards. It's okay. I'm old. It's all right. Uh, we met today at the uh, basically the Mass DOT, you know, the Federal Highway Group, and uh, the what they call MPO, which is the group that actually does the transportation improvement programs for Southeast Mass. And as I said before, I'm one of the members of <laughs> that particular committee that sets up all the programs. Uh, at the end of the meeting, actually during the meeting, we talked about 6 and 28. The project is 75% complete right now as far as, you know, plans, paperwork, et cetera. And the plan is probably to actually start in calendar year 2016, which will be fiscal year 2017. Uh, so most likely sometime, sometime after July of 2016, that project should start and go. Take probably a good year, I would think. Uh, the other piece that came up was what Mr. Sullivan has discussed, which we've been discussing with Rochester and Marion, which is County Road. Uh, I brought it up at the meeting because I wasn't sure whether or not they could help or not. Uh, we talked about the road itself was not classified as a state road, therefore it had been tried and had failed. Uh, since I had everybody there, I basically said, I don't know how to do this, tell me how we can do this. And uh, they said, this is what we're going to do, and basically they are going to, because the three towns all basically are in favor of it, they're going to somehow get Mass DOT to try and take the road. The Federal Highway is also going to look into it because we qualify for certain issues there, uh, which could get money there. If we had to wait for Mass DOT, the problem is the TIP is already booked out till 2018, which means 2019. I told them that's about five years too late. Uh, so I told them the road was basically what I consider an emergency situation and we're gonna try and see what we can do because it's just something, and I explained the difficulty with the road where different points of the road, all three towns, borders come together and it switches back and forth, et cetera. And I told them about our dollar amount of three to three and a half to the five million dollar estimate for our cost and we only get a million dollars a year at best and there's no way to do the project properly. So I will keep after it. It's, on, it's now on the uh, agenda. It's, it's an item that's been put into the state and federal system. So I got that done today as well. Another piece. Of, uh, yeah, but if we go ahead and get nothing money ahead of time. Done, nothing else done. I know, nothing done. That includes patchwork or anything. Ridiculous. And the other piece is I had another, I had someone come in and kind of say that they were a little concerned about coming from Swiss Beach onto Marion Road because the speed limit right at that intersection is about 50 miles an hour. And if you're taking a left hand turn, it's really difficult. And if you go just a little past that over to Wareham Market, just before the market, there's a crosswalk. And they're still going 50 miles an hour. And there's really no signs. The crosswalk's really not well painted. And I've seen a couple of times where someone stops, lets someone cross, and they're on the, the other right side. side of the lane. Yeah. And someone comes flying down the outside lane. And, you know, maybe someone hasn't been killed lately. You know, they've been doing that for 100 years. I know that, but it's a nice lane, a demolition <laughs> derby. So what we have to do there is we have, the town has to write a letter to Mass DOT explaining the situation about the road there. 
uh, asking for help, and they will look into it. They will do a traffic study and see if they can do something there. The other thing we have to do is we have to write a letter to MassDOT, and we'll forward it to the Federal Highway uh, System as well, uh, requesting the county road from the town. The board will all have to sign this letter when it's done. Move to authorize chairman to do that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The um, issue of Route 6 and that crosswalk actually was brought up many, many years ago. I'm sure it has. Um, and there was supposed to be a blinking yellow light on that crosswalk because there was a, an individual who used a guide dog. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've talked about, I mean, if there's, if you've ever been by the Riverview School, whereas the, the flat effect yeah. blinking light when people are going across, that's, I mean, that's what they talked about before. Getting that one done, I mean, probably all of us, if you've gone back that way after one of these meetings, there's people going across that street late, yeah. late at night in the well, dark. They, they basically said that on the crosswalk and the, and the sign, they would, they would take care of that right away. That's not something that has to go through all the different... And you, you, know, you got them to that they're not just going to change the classification, they're going to actually take the road? I think they're going to actually take the road, possibly, because the feds are involved as well. Excellent. Thank you. I'm doing my best. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, it's part of it because it runs into 58, and it runs in there, so we're, it's a good possibility. It was, it was, they were fighting for years just to change the classification, so doing this is much, yeah. much well, better. Well, I think we were lucky because I told them I don't know what to do. How, how can you help me? It was, it was a nice way to do it, basically. The other thing we had, the MMA had their annual legislative breakfast that they do every year. Uh, they went over a bunch of different uh, bills that are pending, et cetera. Uh, we, we, had, we had four of our representatives from the area. Susan G Williams Gifford was there, uh, two other reps and one senator. Um, they discussed everything. They discussed Mr. Baker's budget and other things going on. And uh, it's still disappointing that they uh, have assigned committees and stuff finally. Uh, but they still have not uh, put the rules and regulations for joint committee work, which means there are still no bills moving anywhere, and it's been since January, and obviously our sewer commissioner bill is still sitting for that and anybody else's, so uh, they're still extremely dysfunctional. Um, they discussed Chapter 70, Chapter 90, looking at changes and things. Um, I brought up one piece that was discussed at the school department is that on special ed and the, the programs which are really, the costs are running really rampant, there's really no control on it, and the, the budgets are just, it's destroying the budgets for the school on these particular programs, just what it is. Uh, they use like an average of, I think I, someone told me 17 or 17 and a half percent in their formulas. That's fine, because some towns have five, six percent of their budget for special ed or whatever. In Wareham, we're running in the low 40 percent. So we're not getting reimbursed anywhere near what we need to be. If we were being reimbursed what our real costs were, uh, we wouldn't have an issue with the school department budget is what I understand. So uh, all we can do and we're gonna, we continue to do is sit there and fight about you know, the inequities of the different programs. And to that effect, we've got, I've got seven communities, including Wareham, that are going to be sitting down with the lieutenant governor within the next 30 days or less to sit and talk about issues. Uh, the lieutenant governor has been tasked with coming to the cities and towns to talk about their issues, and that's her job, for, you know, for right now. And I basically talked to Mrs. Uh, Williams Gifford, you know, just uh, at that meeting on Friday to start the ball rolling to put it together. So that's all I got today. Motion just, just to just one, one, one second. One second. Uh, one second. Peter and also Steve. Um, before before the chairman adjourns the meeting, I just want to say this, and I want to be very clear. No one at this table, the five of us. Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Bowen, nobody in the selectman's office, I think it's up there I'm looking, no one in the inspector's office, no one in the Board of Health's office, no one at this table or in those offices has the legal authority to tell you to violate a town bylaw. Telling you that right now, if you guys can pick that up and put it in your papers. Please do not tell us Shirley said, Janet said, my neighbor said, if you go to your shop tomorrow and you're selling secondhand goods and you don't have one of those five tickets on your wall, you are opening your business illegally. If someone comes by from the town, you're at your own peril. Don't tell them Shirley told you it was okay because I've heard that from three people now. And no one at this table, we've done everything we could here tonight 
to try to help you. That does not give you the opportunity to stay open until town meeting. That's not what we did here. It has nothing to do with that. So I want to thank you for giving me that extra 30 seconds because I don't want anybody going away from this meeting saying, oh, hey, the selectmen took care of it. It's going to be taken care of at the end of the month because that's not what we did. So if you open that door tomorrow, you're selling secondhand goods, as Attorney Bowen mentioned, and you don't have one of those five golden tickets on the wall, you are opening that door illegally. Thank you. Mr. Teitelbaum? Just uh, going back, dovetailing with what you were saying about the state budget issues, uh, one of the, the concerns that the Beach and Tourism Committee certainly has, and I know we've heard from our allies over at the Plymouth County Development Council, is that there was a huge slash to the Mass Office of Tourism and Travel. Yes, there was. And uh, what I'd like to do is see if the board would endorse a letter from this body to the governor uh, asking him to restore some of that funding. Yeah, because like, we do depend upon tourism heavily, yeah. and, and those funds uh, aid our local businesses and publicity and everything else. So we authorize the chairman to write a letter. Second. Second. Also include the uh, Beach and Tourism Committee as well on this. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Opposed, five zero zero. Also, in that same vein, we should be asking the school committee to uh, write some, and we can also sign on with them for some of the cuts on these programs that the schools so are moved. getting hit with. Was that a, five, a double five zero zero? Double five zero zero. So moved for another letter. Second. Thank you. All aye. in favor? Opposed, the same five zero zero again. You got a lot of homework now. I have a lot of homework. <laughs> you got a lot of letters to write. Motion to adjourn. So All in favor? Aye. Good night, Wareham. Thank you.